Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in today's video, episode four of our Plasticity Beginner Solid Modeling series, we're gonna get into adding details. Now, remember this channel is a Plasticity affiliate. So if you are purchasing it, you can use the code LEAD10 at checkout and that'll get you 10% off either the indie or studio versions. Now, if you missed the first couple of episodes, don't worry because we're gonna be covering everything that you need from the start of this video. But if you wanna circle back, if you're just getting started, make sure that you do check out our quick start guide, which will go more over the UI and where shortcuts are located. Episode one, we talked about starting shapes. Episode two, we got a bit deeper into edges and offsets. And episode three, we got into patterns. Now in this episode, we're gonna be adding details. So we're gonna use all the tools that we've already seen for things like imprints and offsets, cutting with curves. And we're also gonna dive into using some things like curve driven arrays and the pipe tool. So again, things that we've seen, we're just gonna start applying them so we understand how they work in practice. So to get started, delete the cube. And we're gonna begin with a cylinder. At the origin, drag this out and just start a cylinder shape. Then we're gonna use one on our numpad, which will go to our front view. And we're gonna begin by drawing a line and just make some sort of shape for an indent that you wanna create. Don't worry about being too precise here. And then use B on the keyboard, and this is gonna be our fillet tool. It can be kinda of hard to see when there's a solid in the way, because if you drag one way, you're gonna get a chamfer or a beveled edge, and the other way is gonna give you a fillet. So just make sure that you are rounding those corners. Before we do anything else, I am gonna mirror that to the other side by selecting X. Then I'm gonna bring my solid back. So with the first curve, we're gonna use the imprint technique, which is shift and I on the keyboard, or you can hit F to search for the tool and begin doing the imprint. So we're gonna select that, select our solid, right click, and then we're gonna take this and hide it with H on the keyboard. Now with imprint, essentially what we've done is we've taken our solid body and we've just split the face. This allows us to select that face and then pull it in, making a slight indent. Now, this is extremely handy because we can go back and do things like add fillets or chamfers to those inside edges, and we can add a fillet or chamfer to the outside edge, and it's a quick way to add a lot of detail. Now, if we want to dive a bit deeper, we can use the offset tool, so that's O on the keyboard. We can offset this inward. I'm going to just drag it around until I'm happy with its position. Left click, right click to accept, and then we can pull this in or out, adding more detail. Now, one of the downsides to using this method is that it's going to be offsetting normal to your curvature. If you're dealing with mainly prismatic parts, things that have flat faces, this can work very well because that's how you would do things like trims or windows or portholes. But when we have cylindrical parts, things with curvature, these can get a little difficult, especially if you want to pull them outward. So you need to play around with this a little bit, see if it works in your application, making sure that you do make your selections. But keep in mind that we can also use things like extrude. So if we have a face selected, I'm gonna use Q to union, which will join it together, and then right click to accept. So this is gonna come out in a specific direction rather than normal to the curvature. So even though we used offset and we push those faces in to create that original geometry. We can also select those faces and extrude them. So again, it can be pretty handy. We can play around with this. We can add fillets and chamfers and add a lot of detail without too much fuss. There are other methods that we can use. For example, we can take this curve and hit C on the keyboard, which is cut, and we can cut that through our solid body. I'm gonna hide this with H, and I'm gonna pull this out using G and X just so we can see what we did. So that's one way that we can get rid of some geometry. If we want to, we can select this face. We can unjoin it, which is Alt and J, and that's gonna lead me to surfaces. So if I hide that one, you can see that I've got the secondary one here. If I select it and I hit F to search and I start to type in thicken, this is gonna allow me to create a thickened version of that. So essentially like a formed sheet metal or fiberglass piece that fits a shape. And this is a great way to add overlapping detail. So if you're trying to make a seat or a saddle or something that overlaps, maybe over mold on a grip or a rubberized section, this is a great way to copy a face, 
you can cut it away from the original, you can make that copy, and then you can have something that fits perfectly in there. I'm going to hide this for now with H on the keyboard, and I want to take a look at something else. So from our side view, I'm going to change to face selection. I'm going to use box selection from the top left to bottom right. That's going to only select faces that are within that window. I'm going to hit F on the keyboard and start to type in hollow. A hollow is a way that we can create a thin walled part. I can begin dragging this in or out if I want to thicken it or hollow it inward or outward. And this will allow me to have a part that is completely hollow with a consistent wall thickness. And remember, we do have this extra piece or face that will fit inside of there. So I'm going to go back to my all selection, which is either tab or the number five and G and X, and I can pull this back into place. I could snap it if I wanted to. Um, so for example, when I go to move and I say freestyle, so F on the keyboard, I can move say from this position to this position, like snap one to the other, and then it's gonna fit back exactly where it came from. Now, remember you can use offset, you can use extrude, but because we have geometry that rolls over like this, extrude really wouldn't work very well in this case. So once again, these are ways that we can use tools like imprint, offset face, extrude, as well as unjoin to get rid of portions of a solid body to turn it into a surface and then thicken that. So add a lot of detail with just a couple of tools, a couple of lines, fillets, offsets, imprints, cuts, etc. There's some other things that we want to do. So let's go ahead, let's rotate this around. I'm going to use Control and R, which is our ISO param tool. I'm going to hit Tab, and I'm going to add a division down here. Now, whenever we're adding divisions or breaking up faces, those edges are selectable. So for example, I could pull this out and I could make some geometry changes. Remember, this is a thin walled part, but the inside is not going to change. Only the outside is going to change because we didn't we didn't actually slice the inside face. But the main thing that we want to do here is we want to understand that if we're going to be using this as a path for something like an array or the pipe tool, we want to make sure that we duplicate that edge. So shift and D, right click, and now we've got an edge that we can use as a path. So for example, the pipe tool, when we have the pipe tool, we can begin dragging this out. Now I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so that it overlaps that inside section. And in my options down here, I want to use it to cut things away. So this is W, which is the difference. And I'll select the inside body. And you can see that I was able to cut that away and make a nice detail. This is an area where you might have something like an O-ring around a shaft, or you can have that as a, a nice indent feature. We can also do this with something like the line tool. Now, whenever we're on a curve, like a line tool or a spline, there is a knife option, which you can see in the bottom right. So if we hit K on the keyboard and we start drawing, let's go ahead and just draw a line down here. We'll come back up and back over. What we did with the knife tool was we divided that face. Now, you can see that it didn't go all the way through, but there are sections here where it was able to create that cut. You just have to play around with it and make sure that you are overlapping certain sections. But we can also use the pipe tool here, and we can use it to cut away sections. So I'm going to repeat that over here. We'll select this edge, use my pipe tool, and I'll do it one more time. Select this edge, pipe tool. And you can see that I was able to make those small cuts using that pipe tool just by having a knifed edge or an imprinted edge or a cut edge. But let's say that we want to add something else. Let's say that we need to add some rings or some coils or something around here. Uh, once again, I'm gonna use the pipe tool. This time I'm gonna make a solid. So let's find where this, uh, this manipulator is. We're gonna start to make this bigger. And this is gonna be a completely separate body. So we'll right click. And now I can use an array tool. So for example, if I want to create a rectangular array, I can push that up, but I'm not quite done here because I wanna add rings around this ring. And for that, I'm gonna create a circle. I'm gonna sort of create it over here in the mid, right click, I'm gonna grab that center section, begin pulling it out, but I want it to go in both directions. So I need this to be uh, basically going whatever direction I, I have in this way, I need it to go this way as well. So 0 0.0717, hit enter. 
right click. So in this case, we want to go minus 0 0.0717, and that's going to give us something that is consistent across the whole thing. Now, the reason for this is we want to pattern this around this circle, around this curve. So we're going to take this body. We're, we could do a radial array here, but in this case, I'm going to do a curve-driven array. So F, I'm going to start to type in array, and I'm going to use curve array. Select this as my curve, right-click, and then with them all selected, we'll hit Q, select the center section here, Q, and we want to join them all together. So shift select everything and make sure that we are putting them all together. Now you can also select them over here. I accidentally deselected it, so I'll just have to right click. And now I've got everything here. I'm going to do a rectangular array. We're going to go up on the Z axis, right click. And anyone that I didn't want on the top, let's say I wanted to get rid of these, I'm going to change my selection to body. So we'll select this body, delete it, this one, delete it, and then we'll go back to our all selection. So this is a quick way, again, to add detail by using things like curve-driven array, radial array, or linear array. Now, as we get into our episode five, we will talk more about these arrays to add more detail. And we will, of course, spend a little bit more time preparing and planning those things out. But there are just a couple of more tips that I want to leave you with. So let's go ahead and hide some of this stuff. I'm going to box select everything, hit H to hide. And then I want to bring back, let's say, let's bring back, let's bring back this piece right here. So maybe inside of this, I need to have something special. I'm not really sure what it is, but I'm going to start to extrude this face up. This is going to be a new body. So I want it to be completely new. We can hit B on the keyboard for that. Right click. And then I'm going to do a rectangular array. Now this is going to come up in the Z direction. So I want to snap it maybe there. And now these are going to be disks inside of the shape. But I want the disks to change shape as they go up vertically. So in order to do that, what we can do is we can create a revolve. And let's go ahead and let's just make this more of a cone shape like that. We're going to revolve that shape around. So find the revolve tool. It's going to be going around the Z axis. Let's go ahead and select this profile, revolve around that Z axis. And now what we want to do is we will only want to keep the overlapping sections. So hit Q on the keyboard for our Boolean tool. We're going to keep the intersect, which is shift and E. And we want to select all of these other bodies. So hold down the shift key. Select all the other bodies here, right click. And what we're going to be left with is going to be a tapered section of those cones. So if we bring back the original body, we can see now that we've got those tapered cones sitting inside that other shape. So once again, using these tools like Boolean with the intersect option allows us to start by creating a simple shape, patterning it many times, creating a more complex shape like a revolve, and then using the intersection or the overlap between those objects to create something that's a bit more unique that would be nearly impossible or just very difficult to plan out and build without those tools. So as I mentioned, this is all building toward the next episode where we're gonna begin applying all of these different tips and techniques and working through a project start to finish where we're gonna be modeling something. Now, all the episodes, episode one through four, have only been just simply practicing these tips, these tools, and these techniques. But if you have any questions on anything you've seen so far, please leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.